Made to order March rolls on. This week we're opening up the SPB. Look at this nice gradient, very Zion National Park travel wallet and the Lone Bandit. It's the only time of the year we open up full customization because it's such a pain. We get emails and DMs every single day about it. So get your order in and check them out below. This is the final and last Danner Mountain boot that we're cutting apart. And to finally answer the question why Danner has four of basically the exact same boot and what each one is for. So we're gonna cut this thing in half and run it through our test to really figure out if this is my perfect Danner Mountain boot. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is Danner, the style is the Mountain Pass. And you can see, trying our best to keep all these things in wrangled and straight because I can't keep them straight. And so we literally put hang tags on every single one and every part. They weigh one pound, 10 ounces, a little bit lighter than some of the others. They retail for $430. They're made in the United States. And the way that Danner positions this boot is made in our Portland, Oregon factory. The Mountain Pass was created to be a lightweight and more versatile hiking boot that still reflects our classic Danner styling. Built with light hikes and city streets in mind, the overall design is inspired by our original Mountain Light, which is here. Let me double check. With an updated construction method, that integrates the shank, midsole, and lasting board into a single piece. This new unified platform combined with a low profile Vibram outsole allows us to significantly reduce the weight and create an out of the box comfort that doesn't come standard with most classic hiking boots. This video is sponsored by Just Meats. Just Meats is a meal delivery subscription service and makes the hardest part of meal prep easier and just delivers pre-cooked, pre-seasoned meats and sauces straight to your front door. I love this because I need protein in my life. I raise on meat, it, fits, it sits well in my stomach. I just eat lots of meat and it's the hardest part. Yeah, I always screw it up. It takes forever. And so the, when I found out that Just Meats was a thing, I was like, that's exactly what I need. Because sometimes I just want a steak and I want to cook the other things or I've got some leftovers and I just want the protein taken care of. And the nice thing is it's ethically sourced from local ranches across here in the Rocky Mountain region in the USA, ensuring that they have humane treatment of their animals, feeding the animals the right way, no artificial coloring, no artificial flavors, and the grass fed and grass finished beef which makes it taste better, if we're being honest. This box is what allows them to ship you meats that aren't frozen, that you can just throw in the microwave for two minutes. You get a nice slab of meat, get your protein taken care of, and it's delicious. They sent me the carne asada, the smoked tex Texas brisket, and some herb roasted chicken, pulled pork, and a bunch of sauces, and they're good. They're really good. And if you're like me, and you just don't have the time to cook the right kinds of food, and you end up just eating poorly, this is a good solution for it. Just Meats allows you to get that right protein, that healthy protein that's good for you, in your diet so that you can do the things that you need to do without running out of energy and wasting away. So make sure you use the code ROSE15 for $15 off your first order and the code will stack with any other deals that you have going on the website. So just stack those things up, get some tasty meats and thanks again to Just Meats. So at least one of the four pretty well describes what they wanted to make with this boot, how they wanted to position it, and what it might be intended for. It makes my job a little bit easier, but it's still different enough, and there's some really interesting things with this boot that makes it potentially my favorite. First of all is the leather, because this is a Horween Chrome XL leather. The rest have been pretty decent leathers, but if you don't know, Chrome XL is a really, really famous and popular leather because it's really saturated with oils and waxes and conditioners. It has a really distinct smell. I actually didn't know that this was Chrome XL until we started planning it. I was like, there's no way it's Chrome XL. And then I gave it a sniff test, and it, it definitely smells just like Chrome XL because it has a very sweet, unique flavor to it, <laughs> scent to it. I haven't eaten any, I promise. But to see how good this leather is, we measured the thickness, it's 2.1 millimeters, so pretty close to the rest of the boots. And we cut a cross section out of it to look at how much grain is on the inside of this leather. You can see there's plenty of grain, you know, and, and Chrome XL is a buffed surface leather, so it's technically a full grain leather. And one interesting thing is if you look at the cross section, you can see how blue it is. And we've talked about this before with the other boots, but it allows you to have a little bit more rich light color by allowing those highlights to pop through when you bend and crease it by having such a light core. And we also ran the puncture test and it took 95.5 pounds of puncture through, so a pretty decent score, nothing crazy but not bad. And we also ran the waterproof test on them. And this isn't a waterproof boot. It doesn't have a waterproof lining or anything, so we dunked it in. And it, it kept the water out for the most part and it didn't completely soak after five minutes, but the water definitely did slowly start seeping in. And along with the upper, there is a few changes that they did to the patterning because you can see the tongue is sewn on in two spots rather than it being integrated into that hole cut. You can see there's an extra cut out here in the medial part of the shaft of the boot where this one's a true hole cut. The lacing doesn't run quite as far down the toe as the regular versions. Also still built with the stitch down construction as the rest of them. But another thing that's different is the last that it's built on. It's not quite the same narrow last as the traditional ones. This is their 503 last that's 
really close, just a little bit wider. And I really like this collar. This is like the different colored collar and it's a little bit thinner leather. It's a little more flexible and it just has a really unique look to it that the other boots don't have. And I love the look of that. And as soon as I saw this on the website and even when they got here, I tried not to spoil everything before I did the reviews. I thought for sure this thing was leather lined all the way through. I was like, poor we leather, like this cool like integrated collar. It's not, it's a little bit wider, all these things. And then we got it and started reviewing it and it is fabric lined, unfortunately for me specifically. Lots of people like fabric liners. For me on a heritage style boot, I was really hoping one of these had a full leather lining. I guess the trail does, but there was some other issues with it and it's a lot more of a casual boot. So what is this lining on the inside? Well, it's their Drylex lining, which they say is ideal for warm to hot conditions. Drylex provides excellent vapor transport, is extremely quick drying, resistant to odor and mildew, and is completely breathable. So, you know, any type of lining stuff like that, it's hard to know what's real and what's just marketing jargon, but it does feel like a little stronger and more durable fabric than the other boots that have just this really basic jersey fabric on the inside. So out of the fabrics, I like that one the most. And like I mentioned, it's not waterproof. There's no Gore-Tex linings. You can't get a Gore-Tex lining option in this boot. And if you look at the insole, you can see it's just a very classic Ortholite insole. It's open cell foam. You see these in a lot of boots. It is pretty comfortable for an open cell foam insole, but it's really nothing like built for hiking or anything, or even those plastic inserts that we saw on the trail too. Nope, light too. It's hard to remember all these. And then if we look at the rest of the boot, you can see the outsole looks like it's just like the Mountain Light 1 and 2 with this clitter lift outsole. And it is, but it's a, it's a light version. So you can see the lugs aren't quite as deep, a little more shallow, so it's gonna be more flexible, less durable, less grip, but it is it is their more casual version of this outsole. Uh, I'd personally rather just have the big chunky one if we're, if we're doing it. But it does have the exact same foam through the midsole. It gives you that squish that makes these boots really comfortable while still maintaining the grip of this rubber outsole. And it's also the same hardness at a 30 short. We also ran the bar drop test, bounced up 4.5 inches. We ran the puncture test and it took a lot, 243 pounds to puncture through. So that bifit board might have something to do with why it's so hard to puncture through because it feels like it's a harder rubber. And speaking of that harder rubber, that's the last thing that we really can see from the outside is that bifit board that combines the shank, lasting board and midsole. I don't really know exactly how that works, but you can see it's like a, some sort of harder rubber compared to the other boots that have like more of a true rubber midsole. So I'm interested to see how that's constructed on the inside, how they're able to do that. Is it just a gimmick to cheapen out the boots and be like, oh, it combines all those things and it's all just like one layer. That could easily be it. So that's everything from the outside. Let's cut this thing in half and see if this bifit board is actually integrated into it with all these things or if it's just a hard layer that they're kind of pretending it has other features. So let's cut them in half. All right, we got it cut in half and there is some differences on the inside. So let's see what's inside. So is this bifit board just all gimmick and BS marketing? I don't think so. It seems like there is clear intentions in this part of the boot because you can see it is a harder material. It feels more like a plasticky composite shank material, but you can see there's columns here. I'm assuming to give that shank area some extra support. And then you can see here at the heel, it has a cutout where a foam patches at the heel. So I think there's a circle on the inside that cuts out to give you a little bit more squish in the heel because we learned from the on shoes, it can be really hard to have that integrated full length shank underneath your foot. So I like that a lot. And even the lasting board's different because the others just have this thinner white lasting board. This has that traditional pink Texan fiberboard looking material that's gonna compress a little bit more. It's allegedly a little more durable. And obviously there's no fiberglass shank on the inside because it has that integrated one. So I don't think it's BS. I think they actually pulled that off. Does it, is it gonna perform as well as the others? Is it gonna perform as well as the fiberglass shank? Probably not. But for what it's intended for, it seems like it isn't just BS and there was thought that went into it. And now how does this rank on our graph to really figure out what these boots are for and which one you'd want for certain reasons? Well, this 
this one pretty clearly sits between the Mountain Trail, it's super casual, and the Mountain Light 1 that's slightly more casual than the Mountain Light 2. It sits right in between them, and this is that sweet spot for me. This is exactly what I would want for a light, casual hiking boot that I could still wear wherever I wanted. I'm still getting some of the quality and support and durability of the other ones, but less weight, and honestly, it's a better looking boot. Out of all the mountain boots, this one is by far my favorite. I love the look of this boot. Everything about it, through and through, I like more than the other boots. But does that mean this is the perfect mountain boot for me? No, because I was really hoping one of these had that full leather lining, because I really was hoping that Danner had one true, traditionally made hiking boot, but none of these really are. I love this boot. It's a traditional hiking boot. It's the one that built this whole hiking boot style in the, I think in the 70s, and it's somehow still around today, still being made, but it's not built to the same standard that I think the 70s were built to. But we don't really know, so hopefully we'll be able to find like a really old Danner to cut in half. So that's it for the true mountain boots, but we also still have the more modern version, the Elk Hunter. So this is gonna be next, then we're gonna have the big finale, and really finally establish what the differences are, what you might want one for another reason, compare all the specs for one culminating video for everything you could ever want to know about these mountain boots. So thank you guys for all your support, and help me convince Danner to make this boot the way that we want it made. So thank you guys. See ya. La, la, la.